Now that you have downloaded and installed Component 1 Blazor Edition, let's begin working with the controls. In this example, we'll be working in a Blazor server application with the Component 1 FlexGrid. FlexGrid, our most popular control, is an advanced data grid that enables features such as tabular data editing, sorting, filtering, grouping, and on-demand loading. It also features cell customization, data virtualization, built-in editor controls, and more. In a Blazor server application, your C-sharp code runs on the server. Blazor server applications load faster than Blazor WebAssembly and support browsers that WebAssembly cannot. They keep the C-sharp code away from the browser and allow access to secure resources, such as databases or cloud-based services. Blazor server applications work great when scalability is not a concern. If you haven't already, check out our Getting Started with Component 1 Blazor Edition video for a visual representation of the pre-processing steps required to begin working with the controls. Some of these steps include installation through the NuGet Package Manager and the proper CSS and JavaScript lines. To begin, create or open an existing Blazor server application. Next, right-click on the Pages folder, click Add, and select Razor Component to add a new Razor Component to your project. Provide an appropriate name to the new file you've just created. Then, add the required using statements to initialize and use the FlexGrid control. In this demonstration, we'll be working with our Northwind SQL database to create an order table. A copy of this dataset can be accessed through the common subfolder within our Component 1 samples, which you can download via the Component 1 control panel. Through the NuGet Package Manager console, we can use the following line of code to automatically scaffold the proper model files. These are required to house the data we'll be using in our project. Once executed, a models folder will be generated with the required files. Now that we have the controls properly installed and the data ready to access, we'll want to bind the FlexGrid to the data. First, we'll fetch the data from our database and store it in a C1 Entity Framework Core Virtual Data Collection object by adding the following code in our Razor page. This is how we'll enable data virtualization throughout the FlexGrid. Then initialize the FlexGrid control and bind the fetch data to FlexGrid by adding the following HTML markup to denote the item source. Finally, add a navigation path to the FlexGrid by appending the following HTML markup in the unordered list element of the navmenu.razor file, which can be found in the shared folder. Now we can build the solution and run the project. The FlexGrid should now be bound to your data. Our Blazor FlexGrid control comes with various properties, including filtering, grouping, and cell freezing. These can all be managed directly in your Razor page. Some FlexGrid properties, such as filtering, work best when coupled with other controls, such as the C1 text box. Most properties are referenced twice, once in the FlexGrid HTML portion, and again in the code block where the logic is kept. The code implemented for the properties in this example can be found in our online documentation, along with how-tos, tutorials, and the full API reference. To find specific code examples, you can view our online Blazor Demo Explorer directly from our website. If you choose to install the samples through the Component 1 control panel, they can be accessed directly in your Documents directory 
under Component 1 Samples. If you have any questions or issues during the installation or trial of Component 1, our customer engagement team is ready to help. To learn more about everything Component 1 has to offer, continue with the Component 1 Getting Started series.